you're an entrepreneur, you just started a business and you're asking that question everybody struggles with. Who do I hire first as my first employee? Do I hire somebody in sales, marketing, operations, accounting, finance, product development, legal? Who do I hire first, right? Now, before I answer that question for you, it's a very simple answer, but before I answer that question for you, you got to keep one thing in mind. If you're a startup and you're an entrepreneur and you're already funded, you have money, that group that gave you the money is already expecting you to have a team together because they're not going to give you the money without you having a team to show, here's who I have. Okay, I'm assuming that I'm talking to the group that doesn't have money today. You're without money. You're trying to stretch every dollar. You're wearing multiple hats yourself. Like you're the CEO, CFO, COO, CMO. You're every single thing in the company you're doing right now. Just so happens your business card's a CEO. So who do you hire first? Look, you got a lot of departments and a lot of people will tell you who to hire first. For me, it's a very simple thing to be processing and thinking about. So look at it this way. Any sports team that already has a position, if a team already has a quarterback, you're going to go get another quarterback? No. If a team already has a very, very strong center, you're going to go get another center? No. If you're running a business, whatever your strength is, the first person you hire is your opposing strength. That's your first hire, your opposing strength. Well, Pat, what do you mean the opposing strength? If you're in sales, most salespeople who are very, very good in sales are not necessarily very good in operations, okay? Now, if you're very good at operations, you're probably not very good in sales. If you're incredible at product development, most product development people don't like to be around a lot of people, so you need sales. If you're in sales and you're a great salesperson person like Ray Kroc, but you don't know what product to develop, you need somebody here. If you're someone who's very good with money, and maybe even you have money, but you don't have an idea, maybe you meet up there. But the point I'm making to you here is whatever your opposing strength is, that's what you need to start off with. Now, let's, let's say this other thing for you to be thinking about. I'll go dig, it, dig a little bit deeper. In the game of sports, everybody that builds a team, they generally build it around their philosophy of what's the most important thing to invest their money into. Let me explain what I mean by this. Some teams build around one player. Okay, so for instance, Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan, they built around one player. Michael Jordan was the main player. Then they brought supporting cast to be around him, right? A, you know, San Antonio Spurs builds around a system. They're not building around one personality, one player. That's why they've been playing for 20 years and they're winning 20 years. Whether they go from David Robinson to Duncan to LaMarcus Aldridge and Kawhi Leonard, it's a, it's a system they're building it on, right? I don't know what you're going to be building your business and your philosophy and your system on. But what I could tell you is whoever you choose as your first and next determines what you value the most. Sometimes, sometimes generally the most logical people, the, the people that are most S's and everything to them is very logical and very organized, like the, the administrative folks, sometimes they think they need this. Sometimes they think they need product development only, logical. Sometimes they just go, those, everything is just way too logical and they forget that you need sales. If you don't have somebody selling, you, you don't have volume revenues coming in. If there's no sales going on, done. It's just, it's purely a done deal, right? So back in the days when a lot of companies would do very, very well and they would develop these guys that would become the CEOs of the company, everybody who got started with a company back in the 60s, 70s, you read about, they all had to do sales at one point of their career. Why? Because they have to touch the customer to know what the customer's like. That is my focus. I like to hire this first. So if you're not sales, I like to hire this first. When I got started, I'll tell you for myself, I was this first and I'm marketing. This is me. So guess what I needed? I needed here. I partnered up with here, somebody that designed the products that I needed. So without this, I don't have a product to sell. So I got product to sell and I needed admin. Then I got this. I already had somebody that was helping me out with this, but then I got this, then I upgraded this to a whole different level. So as you're thinking about this with your business, whatever business you're running, take this sheet of paper out, take a sheet of paper out and ask yourself, what is my strength and what are the opposing strengths that I need? Go recruit that person. Go hire that person. Stop hiring people that are just like yourself. It's cool to be around people that are just like yourself. It's fun when you're around people like yourself. That's good maybe when you have a friendship, 
but not when you're running a business. You're trying to win a, create a business, and a business, if you run out of this, you shut down the business, you're going back to having a job. So you got to make sure you make the decision of who you hire first in a very, very proper way, or else you won't be in business for too long. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Let me make a case to you why I believe you need to subscribe to Value Team and also join the notification squad. Look, there's two ways you can learn about business. One of the ways is go to college, learn a bunch of theories by professors who have probably never ran a business before, or you can watch Value Tainment, ran by entrepreneurs who have built and sold businesses, and you can learn from our mistakes and what we did right. And by the way, I'm willing to bet anybody who goes and takes this boring route versus watches Value Tainment, I'm putting my money. This person who watches Value Tainment is going to beat the person who goes to college. You don't believe me? Test me on this. This is why I'm so certain you need to subscribe to Valuetainment and learn the content so you can also be a successful entrepreneur.